Hey guys, so I am back for part two of mini reviews for products that I talked about or hauled or tried out for you in the month of May. So six months back, I'll be going over everything that I didn't go over in part one. Well, I'm just gonna start where I left off basically. So if you're interested in hearing like my final thoughts on these products that I talked about in the month of May, then just keep on watching. So I am recording this the day of Thanksgiving. I'm about to head out over to my parents' house and uh, no one in my family like I don't mind turkey but my mother and my father just don't like turkey so they gave up on actually trying to make turkey probably when I was like in elementary school so I never really have had turkey and like the stuffing all that kind of stuff with my parents on Thanksgiving if I haven't spent Thanksgiving with them I usually will have turkey and all that stuff so when I spend it with them we're actually going to be having um, pork sausage fried rice <laughs> and fried shrimp. So that is gonna be my Thanksgiving meal. I'm excited because I do like those things. But why am I telling you this? Oh, because uh, I have like no makeup on. I put a little bit of concealer on my eyelid and then just stopped there because I gave up. And then I'm using my Rodan lip oil uh, on my lips and yeah, because I expect to chow down. I don't need a lot of makeup for that. I also am suffering from a little bit of eczema. What side is it on? Over here. I have this like little patch here, but it just won't go away. Like it'll get a little bit better and then it'll get a little bit worse. And it'll get a little bit better. So I'm really annoyed. And then I got a really big eczema patch that popped up right here. You probably can't see it because it just feels like scaly, but it doesn't look like red and flaky yet. Although my body eczema is very different from my face eczema. Anyway, so I thought I would just kind of keep things simple. I'm just heavily moisturized. So I thought I would just take it easy on the makeup today, take advantage of the fact that it's Thanksgiving and just talk about the rest of the products that I covered in the month of May. So I left off with the Guerlain Try-On Haul. So I remember before I did this video that I never was really into Guerlain. They're also known for their media rights, which I remember trying years ago, like when I was like in my 20s, I think, and just, sort of not liking it. I don't think the scent really, you know, agreed with me. Anyway, long story short, I went to Guerlain and I like went nuts. I think a friend of mine had a coupon and I purchased a whole bunch of stuff and everything that I hauled in that video, I still really love and I still use. Yes, sorry, I'm looking at the whole pile here. So the first thing I talked about was the terracotta uh, light powder in the shade light warm and I think I just used this actually in a video I just love this bronzer this is just such a great like light everyday kind of bronzer like if you just need to add a little bit of color to your face this is absolutely perfect and then I talked about the terracotta gold light so it's this highlighter that was limited edition I think it's still for sale I think it's still out there but this lid comes off and there's a mirror on the inside and here is the powder I really love this powder but it is admittedly a little bit dark for me here is the shade so you can see that it's just a little bit obvious on my skin tone. So I don't end up using this as highlighter the way I wanted to, the way I think it's intended, but if I am kind of like bronzing up my face a little bit, I'll just put a light layer of this like over my bronzer towards the back just to give it like a little bit of a sheen, but because it's so deep, it works kind of nicely over my bronzer. So that's how I've been using this. I don't use this that often, but I do use this still and I do really enjoy it. And then the Guerlain Meteorites. This was the limited edition Meteorites in Gold Pearl. This I think has sold out, but it's the meteorites that came in the gold orb. I love this. This is a great like if I'm feeling super high maintenance and I'm using like finishing powder and I'll use like a certain color all over my face and maybe I have a deeper finishing powder for the areas that I've contoured and then I'll use this as a finishing powder over areas that I'm trying to highlight a bit. So this definitely has like a highlighty quality. There's definitely a, like a nice pearly sheen to it. There's a little bit of micro glitter going on. This is definitely great for the holidays. So loving that. And then I purchased both the Medium and the Doré in the regular Meteorize line. So these are not limited edition. And I got both because I felt like the Medium was great kind of all over and got the Doré for, again, when I'm feeling super high maintenance and I want to kind of finish off the areas that I've contoured 
or if I just want like an overall like bronzier effect, I'll use the Dore. So still loving and enjoying these. And then I purchased two lip products. So I got the uh, Guerlain lipstick that comes with this cool case where it flips up to expose a mirror. And this is the color that I got. So I remember going to Guerlain with a friend of mine and we're both Golden Knights fans. And we both got this and she was like, oh, this is perfect for wearing to games. This is color number 777. And it's like a toned down version of the Pat McGrath Blitz Gold uh, lipstick. This is not quite as glittery. It's not quite as opaque. And I can kind of wear this on its own, but I do like this either layered on top of something else or as a base layer and I put a gloss on top. Uh, but it is a lot of fun and it is perfect. If you're a Golden Knights fan, it is perfect for the games. And then the last thing I hauled in this video is this uh, limited edition terracotta Kiss Delight Balm in Peach Syrup. I really like this balm. It's so beautiful. It's just such a pretty color. It has a really nice uh, texture. It has like iridescent kind of glitters in there. I just really like this gloss. I use this, I wanna say I use this quite a bit that summer like when I purchased this, but I haven't picked this up in a while, but it is, it is very, very lovely. So the next video I did is a uh, swatch and review video of the Pat McGrath Lust Gloss lip glosses. And I started to kind of go over to my lip glosses and pull out the ones that I really like. And I ended up pulling out so many. I was like, let me just show them all to you. So I have them in this uh, set. I'm actually missing one. I think it's the really gold one that I'm missing that I, oh, you know where it is? Hold on one second. So I just filmed that video with Risa that you guys saw, I think we posted it on Sunday, and I brought this over to her house uh, to try. I don't think she actually ended up using this, but anyway, it was in that bag of stuff that's still sitting there on my floor. I'm a mess. Anyway, so this is the Blitz Gold. So these are the 14 uh, glosses up here. I, I love them all. I feel like I use them all fairly regularly. I always usually end up just wearing a gloss or I'll put lipstick on and then feel the need to have to put a gloss on on top of it. So yeah, I just love it. I think if I had to pick my favorite, it would be Flesh Astral and it's this nude shade and it has like gold, uh, like a gold glittery shimmer to it. Um, but I do, I do love Blitz Gold. Um, I love Alien Jellic. Um, they're all great. They're all absolutely wonderful. So love those less glosses. I did during that video, I still do. And then I launched into Loose Powder Week. So I haven't changed my mind about any of these loose powders. So let me just quickly kind of tell you uh, what my thoughts were for each one. So the first one I talked about was the Marc Jacobs Perfecting Coconut Setting Powder. I think that was relatively new at this point. I did not like that powder. I felt like it made my skin a little bit dry. So I actually gave that to Risa because she has much more um, oily skin than I do. So I don't even have that anymore. The next one I talk about is the Chantecaille Talc-Free Loose Powder. And I think in this video, I couldn't even tell that it had like a little bit of luminescence to that powder. I thought it was just like a matte powder. And on the skin, it's not like it really does like that much to your skin. It's not like a highlighter or anything, but it does, it's just like a, a bump up from just being completely matte. It's it's a little bit more than just natural also. It's probably like a really subtle satin kind of loose powder. And I really like that powder. I think it looks great on my skin. It doesn't make my skin look dry. It really sets down my makeup. And I do like using this powder as a setting powder. And then the next one I talk about is the Sicily Loose Powder. And I love this powder, but it did take me a little while and a few tries to actually like this powder. So purchased it and I use it as a setting powder. You know, I use it under my eye and I was like, this powder looks terrible. It just looked really thick. It looked um, makeup-y. It looked cakey. Um, it emphasized like the lines under my eyes. It has a little bit of like micro glitter in there. So it was just, it was like too much. So I kind of put it away and just didn't really use it for a long time. Then I kind of pulled it back out and I thought, well, let me try it with like a puff. And I tried, you know, setting my makeup with it with a puff. I still didn't like it, put it away. And then I finally took it out and I used it as a finishing powder. After buffing it into the skin, it's beautiful. It has such a beautiful sheen. The little micro glitters, there's just like a few left over. It's, it's not like a glitter bomb went off in your face or anything. It just, it's just nice. It's really nice. I kind of like using it if I'm going out for like dinner. It's, um, it's nice for me personally. I kind of like it for like evening. So it took me a while to kind of get into this powder, but once I realized how I should use it and how it worked for me, 
I have not looked back. It is a lovely, lovely powder. The next one I tried is the By Terry Hyaluronic Hydro Powder. And so this powder is supposed to be great for dry skin. It's supposed to have like hyaluronic acid in there. It's supposed to be really nourishing, but it's one of those really fine white powders. And it just ended up being really dry on my skin. So that one did not work out for me. And I ended up giving that one to Risa as well, again, because she has oily skin. So still not a fan of that. The next powder I talked about is the YSL Loose Powder. This powder is really lovely. It is uh, probably somewhere, I want to say, between the Chantecaille and the Sicily. So it has a little bit more radiance than the Chantecaille, for sure. Not quite as much as the Sicily. And so for me, it works really nicely, both as a setting and a finishing powder. So for setting powder, it's definitely more radiant than I'm used to. I generally just kind of like a matte powder. And as a finishing powder, it's a little bit subdued in terms of like sheen or whatever. And it's uh, more subdued than like the Guerlain Meteorites. So I love the powder. The texture is great. And again, it doesn't like make my skin look dry, it doesn't emphasize lines, anything like that. So I really like that powder. The Chanel Natural Finish Loose Powder is the next one that I talk about. Love this powder. This is one of my like go-to setting powders. It's just, it's wonderful. It's uh, matte like skin like. It's kind of just like a workhorse kind of powder. There are no surprises. Um, looks great on my skin. It's light, but if you feel like you need like a little bit more help, you can kind of build it up. It's, yeah, it's just a great powder. So I love that one. The Armani Microfill Loose Powder. This was a big no, big no for me. Um, it has like way too many micro glitters in there and they, they, they were kind of chunky. It, it was just too much. It, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe I could use it as a highlighter. I don't know. I used it as a finishing powder um, because of all the like glitter in there. And it just, it was just too much. And I didn't think the powder looked that great. So that was definitely a disappointment because I love Armani Beauty. I'm a big fan of their makeup line, but that one just, mm -mm just did not work for me. And then the next powders I talk about is the Clay de Peau and the original La Mer Luce powder. So I have the original La Mer Luce powder. I don't think it's even worth talking about because as I understand it, it is different from the loose powder that they have out as part of their line now. Um, but I did like the original La Mer Luce powder very much. It had like a little bit of uh, glitter to it. I want to say mm, probably not as much as the Sicily. Probably not as much as the Sicily. Probably had the same kind of effect as the Guerlain. Um, and then the Clay de Peau. The Clay de Peau is another one. It's kind of like the Chanel for me. It's just such a great loose powder. It has like a really faint kind of like rose scent to it. So if you like a rose fragrance, you'll, you'll probably really love this. And it is so fine. It really is just like silk over the skin. The only reason why I kind of go between the Clay de Peau and the Chanel is the Clay de Peau has like a very cool tone to it. So if my skin is looking a little bit sallow, the Clay de Peau will look very ashy on my skin and I can't really use it. And that's when I'll use the Chanel. But if my skin is looking like rosy and I'm healthy and you know, everything, you know, maybe I got a little bit of sun, not even so much whether I'm pale or not, but like just if my tone is like, has more of a rosy undertone versus like a sallow undertone, the Clay de Peau is fine. All right, so that is it because my next video is May favorites and I posted that on June 1st. So I asked you guys in my part one of mini reviews for May, like how far of like a time lapse is your ideal? Like at this point, I'm going back six months. It's November and I'm talking about May, um, which I think is kind of cool. I feel like it's enough time where you've kind of forgotten about the products. And if you've been watching me for that long, it's kind of like, oh my gosh, like I completely forgot about the video or whatever. Let me know uh, what your ideal uh, kind of time range is. I'm liking six months, but let me know. I want to do what you guys want. So that is it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. Uh, let me know if you have any questions down below. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you in my next video.